All right. Welcome, everyone, to the 2020 APAC Groundbreakers Virtual Tour by APACO UC. This year, our event will be the biggest one ever done with 174 sessions, including normal sessions, workshops, and hands-on labs from 123 different speakers over 11 days. Also, it will cover sessions on four different languages. Please remember to register to as many sessions you can, and our sessions will be available to replay as many times as you want for two weeks after the initial session date and time. You can also interact with the speaker at any time during that two weeks by posting questions or comments directly in the playback session page. I would like to say thanks to our Oracle user groups and Java user groups that made this event possible, and also to our sponsors, Oracle Groundbreakers and CloudDB. Sorry. Now for today's session, hands-on lab Oracle Machine Learning with Charlie Berger. Uh, please feel free to write questions at any time during the session at using the Q&A tab, and, and Charlie will be answered on uh, 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 anytime he, he want it, or we can just answer questions at the end, uh, depending on how uh, uh, Charlie want to handle the questions. But please use the Q&A to place your questions and use the chat to let me know as the moderator for any technical issues of any other problems. Now, without any more delays, I would like to leave you with this amazing session by Charlie Berger, Hands-On Labs, Oracle Machine Learning. Charlie, um, stop sharing my screen and giving control to you. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that great introduction, Francisco. Uh, I am going to share my screen here, and I am going to walk you guys through, um, I think it's 90 minutes uh, of how to get going with Oracle Machine Learning. So uh, we're going to do live stuff. I sent out some information before that had... Um, login information and guidelines and how to get started with stuff. Uh, hopefully you got that. Um, speak up now or put it in the chat window, I guess, if you are, I'll put the chat window here, if you're uh, um, having any kind of uh, um, challenges getting into the software, because my expectation here is that you actually follow along and you do this and, and maybe you've even done some of the stuff in advance. So, um, so I'm, Let's just dive into it. So anyway, um, let's see if I get this guy out of the way. Hide floating panel, hide floating media controls. All right. So hi, I'm Charlie Berger. I'm the Senior Director of Product Management for Machine Learning at Oracle. And I've been here actually kind of for a while, since 1999, since Oracle acquired the technical assets of a company called Thinking Machines. And uh, I work with about 30 uh, smart developers. They're all PhDs in machine learning, that kind of stuff. And uh, what they do um, for the last 20 years, we have done is to stem cell machine learning algorithms into the kernel of the Oracle database. Uh, there, this is not, you know, running R or running Python. Uh, we have other stuff from Oracle where we do that. We even do a little bit of that with Oracle machine learning. But our main uh, reason for existence, our main intellectual property value add is that we move the algorithms. I think I have a little pop up window here or something that says that we move the algorithms, not the data. And in doing so, it sort of changes everything, right? It allows you to, as an Oracle data professional, I think, make the transition from an Oracle data professional to an Oracle data scientist actually more easily than a data scientist can make the transition to doing machine learning inside the Oracle database. So what this um, hands-on lab is intended to do is kind of give you a little bit of an overview of what you're going to be using and then kind of set you off on a path where you can use the product. And I'll walk you through some examples I've got way more stuff than we're ever going to cover, you know, in 90 minutes. And um, I think I've already shared the, the deck. If not, I can share it uh, afterwards or whatever. But uh, it also points to some materials that are out published already. Um, and so you can follow those along as well. But there's some very good, uh, well-documented examples that you can also just follow it on at your leisure. And uh, the hope is that, uh, you know, you'll be you'll, you'll like the product and, and you'll use it a lot. I should also say that this is all free. Everything I'm, if you have the Oracle databases, uh, everything I'm going to cover right now, as of December fifth, two thousand nineteen, was made uh, a free feature of the database. So there's no reason for you not to be able to go go off and use this stuff, and and do pretty much whatever you want. So I hope uh, I hope you take advantage of this. So with that, let's let's dive into it. 
uh, safe harbor statement. I might be mentioning a few futures here. Um, and in this introductory hands-on lab, we're going to get to try out the new Zeppelin-based notebooks. So we also have functionality that runs on-premise or in the database as a cloud service. That's all part of um, Oracle Machine Learning as well. And the, the algorithms themselves are the same thing, whether or not you're using them in the database on-prem or in the database up in the cloud or in the database on autonomous database or transactional autonomous database. It's all the same thing. It's all just SQL functions uh, inside the database, and you can you can use these wherever. Depending on whether or not you're on um, prem or in database to cloud service or in the autonomous database, you'll have different sort of uh, options for user interfaces. At the core, you're just doing SQL. So if you know SQL and you're comfortable with SQL, you can do that. If you prefer a drag and drop kind of experience, that's called Oracle Data Miner. It's part of the thicker clients of SQL Developer, and that's what you, you would use on prem kind of environments or database to cloud. Here, we're going to use the uh, notebooks that come with the autonomous database. And so there's nothing to do, nothing to install. Uh, you can interactively work with your data, build, evaluate, and apply models. And we're going to walk through that during the next uh, 90 minutes here. So as I've said, the outline is a few quick concepts, a little bit of an overview of the product, go through the, example, the, the environment, make sure you're all set. Uh, we'll pause for questions along the way, or just please interrupt me or, or you know, say something in the chat window, or maybe Francisco or somebody can, can, can pull those, you know, draw those to my attention if I'm missing anything. Uh, we're going to run through a little bit uh, the example notebooks that ship with the product, and then we're going to go to what I think is a slightly more interesting one, a little bit more visual. Uh, we do a couple more tricks in there. The targeting customers who buy insurance notebook that's available on the analytics and data Oracle University or Oracle user community GitHub. Um, and I'll show you that if you didn't already find that. Um, and then we'll go through it a little bit, but we'll probably run out of time. Uh, but the credit scoring workshop is very well documented and we'll cover a little bit of that, but it's, I also kind of put that as further reading almost because some of this gets a little bit repetitive. Maybe your attention span is only, you know, as short as mine and, and you can do that at your leisure. Um, please along the way, ask questions. So let's get into it. The, I always like to start out with a slide that shows Larry because people kind of wake up and go, oh, that's the sixth richest man on the planet. You know, what's he up to? Well, he's talking about my stuff, Oracle Machine Learning. And this was at the most recent Oracle um, Open World. And he was talking about uh, something we've all started to come to call the Converge Database. And the Converge Database is kind of a, a, a nice uh, concept because it, uh, um, it really is saying that uh, um, you don't have to move the data to do all these different things. You don't have to have a specialized um, product uh, for in-memory, for JSON handling for machine learning or whatever, it's all part of the same platform. And when you buy into that concept, I think you, you start to say, oh, that makes so much sense. And also you see at the bottom here, the spatial, the graph and the machine learning, these three guys, which were always sort of, you know, techno niche kind of things that were priced at the same price as all the other mainstream stuff. Uh, they were priced at $23,000 per processor. Well, as of December 5th, those were decided to be made free as really database differentiators. And I thought the sales guys would stop calling. I thought my phone wouldn't ring, but it, it's been quite the opposite. The, everyone's just been saying, wow, I, I didn't know about this stuff. You mean we have access to this, let's use it. And so it's been kind of exciting times. The Converge database has many benefits, uh, reduced complexity, handling many different data types. Um, it's, uh, it can do many different things. The thing that I'm most excited about is the last one, discover new insights and make predictions. Because why would you save all this data in the first place if you weren't trying to see the data in new ways, discover insights, and unlock endless possibilities? So to me, that speaks or screams, oh, they must be doing machine learning here, at least some sort of data analysis, and hopefully machine learning. Another thing that I've noticed about the uh, converged database is that it really does open up a lot of new doors and a lot of opportunities. Uh, and I've seen more and more people sort of move systematically almost up this food chain, if you will, not necessarily a food chain of value or whatever, but doing different kind of things. If, if more and more of the uh, DBA architect and, and some of the basic things are more and more uh, easier and more and more automated, then you can start to move up the, 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 the value add food chain, if you will, and start to wrangle with the data and get new derived variables. Like, like if you're trying to predict employee attrition, what's your, your, your bonus amount this year? Um, what's your bonus amount compared to your compared to your peers? What's your bonus amount last year compared to your peers? And you know these these different variables are 
or, or what we would call an engineered feature for machine learning, then someone's got to one, think of that as a useful variable. So it requires your domain expertise. Someone's got to actually do the work and that's either a data scientist or in so many cases, I think of an Oracle data professional. And then you got to push it through the algorithms to build the model and apply the model. And that's what we're going to do today. So if you do all that, you can also go a little further and just run that as a script and build an application. So you can really just develop smarter data-driven solutions. The way that we do this is, is the following. We take the algorithm on the right, which some of you may have recognized as Bayes' theorem. That's called the naive Bayes algorithm. And a Bayes algorithm is just based on counting. And that's what the database does very well. It counts things and we build a conditional probability model. So if we move that into the database and we count the number of times that the customer, let's say bought an electric car or bought a motorcycle or defaults on a loan or responded to this drug treatment or whatever, we can, we can say, well, how many, you know, what, how many of the people that bought a motorcycle were males? How many were females? How many lived in their own home or how many uh, rented? Um, how many people um, already had a motorcycle? How many people uh, own a dog or a cat? And when you get to variables like age, what do we do there? We, we, we bin it into, you think of a low, medium, high, but it's more like 10 different bins and there's more intelligent ways of bidding that, that with respect to the target field. But we essentially taught a 40 year old relational database how to do a machine learning algorithm. And that was the very first one we did along with an association rules. And over the last 20 years, we kept on adding in more and more algorithms like for regression, classification, clustering, anomaly detection, sentiment analysis, we leverage all of the strengths of the database so we can do aggregations inside the database and feed that as a vector of, of, of uh, you know, uh, uh, quantities into a predictive model for who's likely to, I don't know, um, uh, buy something. Uh, we use uh, text. So if one of the variables you had was a marital status and it was uh, a, a clob, character large object in the database, we'll just use Oracle text to tokenize all the unstructured data and bring in a vector of terms. and we, we, we implemented all these kind of machine learning algorithms as native SQL functions inside the database. So you're not pulling the data out to run R or Python or TensorFlow, you're, you're doing those kind of functions natively inside the database. And we, and we also integrate with R and we integrate with Python, but that's, um, that allows those people to speak those native tongues and use these same algorithms. You can also do callouts to Python or R but then you're just using open source there and you're, but you're doing more and more of the work inside the database. You can build a model outside in R or Python, and then you can score it inside the database. So there's all sorts of wonderful advantages there, but um, you know, that's, that's what we've built. And we think it's a very powerful uh, solution. It's much more of an AI database, maybe now a thinking database. It really sort of changes everything because you think of all the wonderful things you can do now with all that. So now I'm going to go through a few quick machine learning concepts. And the first one is, well, what is machine learning? And I don't mean to speak down to anybody that already knows this, you know, and maybe has two PhDs in this. That's not my, my point here, but a lot of people don't really have a good handle on what machine learning is. It's something that they've read about, they've seen it in the press, they want to get into it. Maybe they took one quick course or something, but um, so just a quick summary here. And you're, you're automatically, that's the key word, I think, sifting through large amounts of data to discover hidden patterns, new insights, and to ultimately make predictions typically. The ones on the top three are what we would call supervised learning. In those cases, we're dealing with what we would also call labeled data, historical data that we know the answers to. We know who defaulted on a loan, who bought solar panels, yes or no, uh, who voluntarily left the company, uh, yes or no, zero, one. Um, if some things may be, uh, what's your lifetime value, low, medium, or high? Um, if you are trying to predict lifetime value as a numerical value, we'd call that regression. You're trying to predict a, a number. Um, so those are examples of what we'd call supervised learning where you have data to train on where you know what the answers are. So we build a model on that. We test the model on a holdout sample and now we can see how accurate our model is. If we're dealing with data that we don't know what the, um, the data is not labeled and we're just asking it in an unsupervised way to do something, then, then that's what we call it. We call it unsupervised learning and you're trying to do things like try to find or identify segments in the population, identify rare or fraudulent events and so on, a market basket analysis. So of course we have uh, all these kind of functions inside the database and that's what I use this as a nice little graphic. It's from a couple of guys that I uh, used to work with, Michael Berry and Gordon Linoff. Um, they wrote 
some of the really, I think to this day, best books on machine learning um, back when we were at Thinking Machines, they just spun off and, and started becoming machine learning consultants. And they use this, uh, an example that's very similar to this. They have, diff they have animals, different types of dinosaurs. I changed it to people who uh, have a lease and people that you know uh, are walk away from it and people who keep their lease. And so if you just try to fit a straight line linear fit, like Y as a function of X sub I, like a regression fit, a linear single variable regression fit, on a two, var two, two variables here, it's gonna do you know, not the greatest. If I put in more of a polynomial fit, you know, squared terms and such, it might do a better job of finding the, the, those relationships. But if I use some machine learning techniques, techniques like for example, um, a, a decision tree, a decision tree is gonna carve through that data and find or discover these little cut points right along here, because what it does is it iterates through every possible cut point until it finds sort of a curb in the data. The information gain about separating the two classes is really increased if you can if you can cut up cut it right there. Similarly, right here, if you cut it, and then once you do that cut, you cut it again, you split it, you split it, you split it, and the decision tree grows out, finds these pockets of people. It can also give rules or reasons why it found uh, these pockets of people. So, uh, or, or describe describe what it found. So a decision tree is one of the ones that's the easiest to understand. Of course, we have decision trees. Um, our decision trees can also mine unstructured data like text uh, and, and trans, trans, uh, transactional data and so on. So we're trying to provide insights and predictions. Now, before we go too far, I do want to spend just a little bit of time. I've got a, a blog series on this. I've, I've done some YouTubes on this um, and, and I recommend you read more books or whatever if you're getting into this stuff because I think the single most important thing about machine learning has nothing to do with algorithms. It, you know, it's not like, oh, I have all this data, can, can you analyze it with your algorithms? The question is, what's the problem statement? What are you trying to do? And if I'm trying to predict employee attrition, well, do I care about people that were fired? Maybe not. Do I care about people who are on maternity leave, yes or no? Well, I do, but they're not, they didn't really leave. They, they may be not employed today, but you really have to think about a really clear definition of the problem statement, regardless of what it is, you know? And, and, and he gives this example of, if he was asked to solve a problem, he'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem statement and the last five minutes thinking about solutions. And I think the example might be, if you were asked to save the planet, what would you do? Well, what do you mean by that is, is his comeback. Do you mean save all the men, women, and children or just the men and women? Um, uh, or, or just the women and children? Uh, or do you save all the animals? What about the animals? Uh, what about the pets? What about the wild animals? Um, for how long do you save them? If you wanted to save them till eternity, maybe you just put them all in formaldehyde and you're done with it, right? If you need to save them just for five minutes while maybe an asteroid you know, skirts by the, the planet, maybe hits it, you'd say, well, I'll beam them all up into space for five minutes, then bring them back down again. So you have to be very precise with your problem statement. And then that sort of flows into what kind of algorithmic uh, approaches you might uh, use to tackle that problem. And this goes into a little bit more uh, detail of that. I was already given the example of employees that are likely to leave. Um, you probably don't have a field in the database that says these people left, these people stayed. It's probably like, what was their last date of employment? Uh, there may be a cause or a reason code. You need to convert that into something like a yes, no, or a zero, one, and that sort of lends itself into a classification type of problem. Um, similarly, uh, in that uh, use case, um, if you, if you predicted when they're gonna leave and you, and you said, well, they leave when they give a termination notice or you know, that's too late. You wanna say, well, what did they look like three months before they left? Cause I want a three month early warning predictive model. So, uh, or a one year in advance model. So you have to really be precise. If I'm trying to look at what people look like before that three months before they leave then I have to back the clock up and say, well, what was their salary? What was their bonus? What was their review versus their boss's self review, you know, the self review versus the bosses and did they change their marital status? What happened three months leading up to um, three months before they, they left? Similarly on, on customers that churned, you have a definition for that. Uh, to, to targeting your best customers, what do you mean by best customers and so on? So there's a whole sort of blog series and a whole other presentation that goes into a fair amount on this. And because of, of, because of everything I was talking about here in the problem statement and the fact that most of machine learning is data preparation, data extraction, data wrangling, deriving these new engineered features. That's why I'm so, that's why I get so excited about this. And also just because of the observation that 
most of the people who are having the most fun and success using Oracle machine learning are people who are Oracle data professionals and just simply kind of learn how to, you know, take advantage of these techniques that are now free. Um, and so what happens if you don't do this, and you, you go hire a data scientist, they come in and say, well, I use Python or I use R. They will do all this stuff. You may, you may be doing all this work. And then there's this little part where the machine learning magic happens. It may be in Python or R or whatever. And then um, once you get the model built, you in order to use the model, you have to schlep all the rest of the data out to that model and then import the predictions and insights. And for us, that's all eliminated or minimized with Oracle. So um, to get started with this, this is part of, the, I guess, the hands-on lab, but, but just to show you how easy this stuff is also, there are a number of example notebooks for anomaly detection, for market association rules or market basket analysis, attribute importance and so on. We're gonna look, take a look at these in, in a minute, but you'll see that they're, they're sort of, you know, templates that you can use to, to, to learn how to do this stuff. So we try to make it easy. And at the end of all this, you know, we don't really have a certificate yet, but we're working on one, an Oracle machine learning certification program. Uh, and you too can become an Oracle data scientist. Um, I, change, I keep on changing this. I should have changed in this slide here. Not really a database developer or a DBA specifically. I think I've changed this to an Oracle data professional to an Oracle data scientist. And that's a little bit more all encompassing there. And there's this blog series. If you go to blogs.oracle.com or machine learning, just Google Charlie Berger machine learning, you'll probably come up with that. And there's a, there, you can buy books. This is what I've done. There's YouTube versions of it and so on. So with that, um, well, I guess we're still talking about the product for a minute. So bear with me. Um, the product is called Oracle Machine Learning. We have the SQL API, we have R, we have Python. We're going to focus on the SQL and the notebooks today, although you could use the drag and drop GUI, Oracle Data Miner, and so on. But what we're trying to do, as I've said a few times, is we're trying to make machine learning simple. So we're going to go through notebooks like this. They are uh, using Oracle Machine Learning notebooks. Uh, it's a collaborative user interface for data scientists and analysts. It comes packaged with the autonomous database. It's easy to use. And you know you can be the judge of it, but we'll go through it now. Under the hood, all of you know machine whether it's the GUI, the R, the Python, whatever. When you press go with whatever API or language you're using, you're, you you have the opportunity to tap into these algorithms. We have over 30 algorithms, like at the naive Bayes I mentioned before, logistic regression, decision tree, random forest, and so on. Different types of regression models. XG Boost is coming in the latest version. That's in the 2021 20, C version, whatever we're calling it these days. Um, and we also have time series came in, what, 18, I think. Uh, but my point is these are power tools. These are not like your father's machine learning algorithm that's out in R or, or SAS or SPSS or something like that or Python. These are those techniques, but implemented natively as SQL functions inside the database. So if you have 500 degree, 512 degrees of parallelism and a big honk and X data box, maybe up on the cloud or wherever, and you press go, we're going to mine through millions and millions of records and hundreds and hundreds or thousands of columns in minutes. I mean, that's it's like doing a query inside the database. And when I scored, it's even faster. And if you go to that blog site, you can see some performance benchmark numbers on that. So if you're on-prem, you're using the stuff on the left. If you're in the cloud, you're using the stuff on the right. Okay, these are the notebooks. That's what we're gonna focus on. But on-prem, you have a few more options. On-prem, you have support for R and in the cloud, very, in a very short number of uh, days or weeks, uh, I'm just going to say at the end of the year to be kind of safe, we'll have Python added here. So in the notebooks, you can also use Python, which will also bring in this auto ML capability. We can talk about that. And then the Python will get ported back down to the on-prem and the R will get ported back up to the Py to the, to the, uh, to the cloud. So we're, we're going to kind of go both ways there, but um, there's a little bit of a separation here, cloud on the right, on-prem on the left, or databases of cloud service on the left. Okay, into the hands-on lab. Hopefully I didn't bore too many of you guys with this. I'm gonna pause for a minute, see if there's any questions. Uh, well, I've got a few participants here, so if you have any questions, please, please speak up the floor. I didn't get the email with the lab logins, huh? Uh, well, I'll show it to you now, I guess. I'll show you how to get there now. Um, I thought it was in the, uh, the thing. Uh, my bad if that didn't get to you or whatever. Uh, wait a minute, there's more chat on here. Okay. Uh, from, uh, I didn't get an email with a login. It's registered only today. Blah, blah, blah. Thanks, we'll send it to you. Thanks. Okay, so somebody sent them a few different things there. I'll show it to you. Okay. 
All right, so so I think you have uh, that resolved. Hopefully, if not, it's pretty easy to set stuff up. So now we, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Oracle machine learning that comes with, I'm gonna point you to the always free instance of the database, although I'm gonna sneak, you know, cheat and use my not always free version because I have more stuff, but I'll show you how to do that. There's a machine learning um, video. Let me just show you where the machine learning video is if you don't have that. Let me, uh, this is this is a good thing. I'll put that in the uh, chat window right now. So over to here and get this guy kind of out of the way here. I'll put him right there. So if I go, how am I gonna do this? I guess like that. If I go, shh, can't see what I'm pointing at right now. If I go to, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, uh, oh yeah, here's what I'm looking for. Oracle machine, Oracle, it caps that, machine learning uh, burger, YouTube. So this, this is where I go when I, when I can't find it. So right here, uh, is this um, getting started thing that, that is just a... Um, let's get started with the Oracle. Let's get started. He's saying, I don't know if you could come Party. through over there, but you, you log into here. In and to the uh, always free no, version of the Oracle Autonomous Data. You, you, you go to, I'll Previously show you this live in a second, but this this little video kind of walks you through. Add, can access date. I come up with the whole thing. So I'm going to share this link. It seems like awfully enlarged on here. Uh, I'm going to share this link in the chat window, if I can find that over here. Chat window. All panelist intends is getting started. YouTube. So if you do that, it'll show you what you're doing. And what it's going to say for you to do is to, and I'm going to do this just from the very uh, beginning here as well. I'm going to move that guy up there a little. Maybe I should make this guy a little bit smaller. Yeah, that might help. Uh, I'm going to make my instance of the cloud here just a little bit smaller so it fits in the window. And I am going to go right here and say, okay, let's just Google Oracle Autonomous Database. Let's do that, right? You guys can all do that. And I get the self-driving database. What is an autonomous database? And there's this always free thing. So try the Oracle Cloud for free. Now, I've already, if you click there, you're going to go down some sort of path. I've already done that. So I'm, I'm going to sign in as, um, I guess I'm going to sign into cloud. So you just set up a cloud account, follow that thing. Hopefully you've already done it. And you'll get to something like this. It'll send you an email and you log in. Now I've got two different versions here. I also have this Charlie cloud version. That's my free version that I set up. And then um, I'm going to go to my other one, the ADW thing, but you go into ADW or you know, whatever, whatever you give your cloud name. And if you forgot your cloud or name, you can do this. If you need to sign in using a traditional, well, I don't know, you're not a customer yet, sign up here. So I will put this guy also in the chat window. And if you have not done this thing, you're not, I always joke that I did this at Oracle Open World when Larry announced this stuff. I signed up for my own cloud account um, while I was going up the, the escalators on Moscone West from Moscone floor up to the third floor. And by the time I got up those escalators, Get to the top, I had my cloud account. It's that straightforward. So do that if you haven't done that already. And I'll show you how we how we get in here. So I've already logged in. I've got this uh, ADWC and I'm gonna log in here. Now I always just kind of skip ahead and go to, I'll show you where I'm gonna typically skip ahead. I'm gonna go over to here where I see machine learning, but to get from here to here, sometimes people get lost. And so that's why I did that YouTube video that you can see. So I'm going to come in the, through the front door and I've set up that cloud account. And when I log in, and hopefully this is all going to work. It's always a little bit dangerous doing it live, but I have sc screenshots of everything in case anything fails. So I come into here and I see all systems are operational, view health account. I've got a bunch of different stuff here. Uh, I am not being charged because I'm an Oracle guy using an Oracle account that's made available to me, but in my cloud always free account, I'm not getting charged either because it's always free. And so you, someone, someone did say, well, I can't do that because I don't have a credit card. And I go, oh, they won't charge it. And I just it really turned out they didn't have a credit card. They just had a debit card and they couldn't use a debit card, didn't want to, I don't know what, but you do need to have a credit card. It will not be charged. I guess they check it, make sure they could charge you, but they will never charge you. And I know I've done that myself. Um, and so you can go off and do that. It's, it's very straightforward. So you get to a place like this. And somewhere along the way here, it'll tell you what to do, like uh, create an Oracle autonomous database. And there's a little tutorial on how to do this. 
So if you watch any of the training or whatever kind of stuff that's out there, and there's lots of it, um, you can you can get through this. I'm gonna just go right to it, show you what I did, so because that's not the main thrust of this hands-on lab tutorial. And I come into here to my autonomous databases. I apparently have several of them here. I don't know who set up this one here. That's I don't know who that guy is. I got to think about that. But here's the one I've been using right here. So I am going to yeah the 16 one here for some reason I got 16 things over here somehow. I'm not going to complain. So I come into here, I see my autonomous data warehouse is available. If this were the autonomous transactional database, Oracle Machine Learning is part of that too, because it is part of the database. So it's in everything. And I can, from here, go to the service console. And the service console then says, well, what do you want to do? You want to watch the uh, activity of your database over here? Do you want to um, uh, do any kind of administration kind of things, which I want to come back to? I want to do this one right here. Or do I want to do any kind of development things? And as a development thing, I would come and use these notebooks. Also, REST services, I have Apex, I have a bunch of different things over here. And I can also download, is this the download the client right here is where if I want to connect in through, say, SQL developer and upload some data or something, I would do that. First thing I'm going to suggest you guys do if you haven't done it already is to create Oracle machine learning users. And so I am logged in here, I think, as admin. I think I'm admin right here. Yeah, yeah user administration, I'm admin. And I would say, well, there's this new guy instead of uh, Charlie, let's call this new guy CH at Charles. That's what my mother calls me, so Charles. And I would give my email address, and I have this in here. And I would just probably, what I've been doing is just giving the password that I can, that I know. And um, you would do the same thing. So as an admin, you're not going to be able to run the notebooks. You have to create sort of Oracle machine learning mere mortal users. And so you want to do that. I've already done that. And so I see, I guess I did Charles before. So here's Charlie, and then Charlie has a username and a password and I can reset this stuff, but it's all been done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign out of the administrative panel because now I've created my user and now I'm gonna log in to Oracle Machine Learning. I don't wanna log in with uh, uh, insufficient privilege. So I'm trying to log in as the administrator here. I don't wanna do that. I want to log in, um, I guess where I have over here, manage all development. I want to log in as the notebooks. So I've probably sent you. So now it says Oracle machine learning database user credentials. Okay. So that's what we want to do when I log in here. And I'm in and hopefully you're in here too. Okay. Now I'm just going to see if anybody's complaining that they can't get this far. I'll send it to you. No questions. Can anybody type into the chat window that they're following along and they are successful that this is making sense to them? Because I'm, I don't hear any voices. I don't hear any kind of feedback at all. So I'm hoping you guys are not like, you know, having struggles out there. Can somebody say, yes, this works for me and I'm doing well, keep going. Um, don't see anything from anybody yet. So please provide some sort of feedback. Yes, works for me for, for fact, right? I'm pronouncing your name wrong probably. Good. Anybody else? Thank you for the feedback. Anybody else? Somebody else, please say they're doing okay here. Anybody else? Got an audience of one, it looks like. Can you an HP? Yes, you can. You can use an autonomous tra transactional database. Okay, so Harry says all good. All right, good, good. Thank you to that. Oh, this says to all panelists, you can do also panelists and attendees too, guys, if you want. It's up to you, whatever. Um, all right, it looks like we have at least two people with ignition, so let's keep going. Um, thank you for that feedback. Really do appreciate that. Um, so I'm going to come back to here, make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to go back to my slides to make sure I'm doing everything the right way here. So we logged into Oracle Machine Learning. We did that. Um, I sent the YouTube for about getting started. There's this workshop that we're going to cover in a minute. Um, there's a lot of documentation. There's some GitHub repositories. So this is all stuff that uh, we're going to go through. You can also just Google these things and find them pretty easily. I walked. I logged into the always free Oracle Cloud account. Um, I set it up the way I just showed you. I logged into the autonomous database. I set up my own autonomous database. This is this, these are the screenshots I took with my always free version apparently. Um, and look, at I just had, you know, not so much storage and not so many CPUs, but really it works just fine. You could do a whole expense report, um, fraud detection application on, on something like this. So, you know, you could 
solve problems, make money using this thing. It's great. Um, service console, administration, click on manage Oracle machine learning users, create a user, log in as a mere mortal user now, and you're in. So we're up to the examples. And I'm going to click on the examples, but I'm going to do this, I guess, live. I'm just trying to see what we're doing here. And then we're going to open up a notebook. We're going to import a notebook. Okay, got it. Let's do that live. So now I'm into Oracle Machine Learning. I'm going to move this guy up here a little bit more. So I got a bigger screen here in some way. Why is that not doing what he wanted to do? Okay, there we go. All right, I think that was working. Oh, so question and answer here. Uh, open. Okay, I guess he already got the, 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 the email there. Okay. So now I'm going to go back over to what the live product, where's the live product over here. Okay. And this is what I was going to try and make a little bit bigger here on the screen. Okay. So here we are with uh, Oracle machine learning. We're into the notebooks. And what I always recommend uh, that you do is come in here, look at the examples. So the examples, just word of caution before I click on the examples, you're not going to be able to use these things. You're going to be able to just look at them and then you export them and then import them again. So that's why I show in the other thing. Also, you have the uh, on the side panel here, you have connection groups, notebook sessions, a little bit of administrative stuff. This is going to expand over time. We have a new thing called the auto ML user interface, which is going to allow you to just click, click, click. You're not going to have to write any code and that will generate the notebook code as well. But you just look for in the, in the coming weeks, uh, other things being added in here that, that simplify some of the stuff. We're going to start out with the notebooks. And I have what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine notebooks. Um, let's go into my first notebook. And there's always a little bit of a delay and hopefully we're not gonna have too many problems here doing this because there has been a performance bug, an actual bug that's been out there. I unfortunately was the guy that found it and it would take like forever to open up the notebooks and sometimes they would stall out and it's been a P1 bug that the guys have been scurrying around fixing and hopefully it's already fixed by tonight. Um, but it was something I, I did run into uh, not so long ago. And I'm hoping so far I was checked in earlier today and it seems to be working just fine. But um, if you do have a, 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 a problem where the experience is like pauses or something like that, um, raise your hand because I, I think I have a workaround I can suggest to you. Uh, you basically reset your connection group and come back in again. And that's just a temporary workaround. So you see this, you see I have um, these um, paragraphs. And in the paragraphs, I can type in SQL, percent SQL. I can type in uh, SQL, I can do scripts. I'm just doing some simple graphing here, just kind of showing you, you know, hello world, I've created a notebook. I'm gonna take this guy and just show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna export this notebook, drop them down somewhere, and then I'm gonna come back here to my regular notebooks and I'm going to now import that. Now, I would pick a better notebook than that. I would pick like the, um, classification notebook, or actually I think I put in the uh, instructions, I really recommend maybe you go out to GitHub and get one of the better notebooks out there. But if I go to downloads, um, here's my first notebook right here. And I will just um, import that. And you can import multiple notebooks at the same time. It, it, it imported it successfully. It was last updated. Apparently if I sort like that, it'll come up here and there's the notebook. I'm not gonna open up that notebook yet. I'm gonna go to a um, different notebook that we're going to walk through in a minute. This one here that I'll show you where you can get that from. This is my favorite notebook. We're going to come back to this guy. Um, but I just want to give you a better view. I said I was going to do a real quick demo at this point. And that's, so that's what I'm doing now is the, is the quick demo. And so this is, um, I think, a, a notebook that shows off a lot of features. Uh, and I just want to kind of show this to you real quickly. Notice uh, as we sort of get going on how to use the notebooks in general that we have these uh, interpreter bindings. And this is the markdown language, uh, autonomous data warehouse, uh, low, medium, and high sort of connections is like how many pipes do you use? And if you want to control this as an admin or as a user, you can say, I, I don't want to use too many. I just take low is fine. Uh, basically, there's a there, if you ever went picked high, we're still going to have a, a priority system that, defined by your admin. Um, but uh, they're just a way to sort of throttle or, or put a governor on, you know, the, the the number of um, uh, connections, I guess, that people are, the speed of the parallelism of the connections, um, because we want to have some control over that if you wanted to. I, as you can see, use all of them all the time. And so far, we haven't had any kind of problems. Um, it seems to run just, just fine. When I run a particular paragraph, it's using that interpreter binding to make a call from the notebook back to the server. 
And in this case, I was using the uh, Markdown language. Now, if you do have anything that, that sort of pauses, um, one of the things you can do is, is restart this. Sometimes when you import the notebooks from what I just showed you, uh, it used to be that those interpreters were not set. So you'd say go and nothing would happen. And you'd say, what? And you'd go into the interpreters and say, oh, nobody clicked on these things. I think we changed that. So when you export and we import whatever was the settings before, I think that's the way it works, but um, I, I've seen a lot of changes. So just check that and verify if, if it should just work. And if it doesn't just go in there and turn on the interpreters. And those are basically your, you know, your, your connections. Um, so over here, I have a thing where I, I always like to put a pretty little picture in here to kind of see what's going on. And if you if you Google Zeppelin notebooks and look for tips and tricks on how to do things in Zeppelin notebooks, they give you the way to kind of put in a picture out here. And that's what I've done here. Whoops, wrong one. Um, I want to go over to here and say hide editor. Um, I've been doing this thing lately where I'm using this crisp DM methodology that says you should have a business understanding, data understanding, data preparation, model building, model evaluation, model deployment. So I've been using those chapter headings for everything that I do. So here I'm using some markdown language, markdown language, business understanding. If I run that, it just, you know, sort of runs and there it is. Now, one of the things I'm going to do now as I'm thinking about this stuff, as I'm going to go up here and show you another trick that says run all the paragraphs, just do the whole thing. Now I could export this, I could delete it. I can also set this up with uh, different, oh yeah, I forgot to show this. There are different uh, projects and different workspaces, and I can have different team members all collaborate in the same workspace or different workspaces. I can have, uh, I have these ideas of templates. I have my own personal templates. I have shared templates where once I do something I think is pretty cool, like this picking a good wine one and a few other things, targeting Teslas and different things, I put it over here in a shared folder so the different people I work with can have access to it. But I'm gonna go back to my own um, notebook over here Actually, where was I? I was just going back, not, not the personal templates. I'm just going back to my notebooks and the one I just had open. I guess I went away from it here. So let me just open that back up again here. So back to the notebook I was just showing you, which I'm doing this little demo because it has a lot of different features, I suppose. Um, and okay, we've got 45 minutes to go. We'll, we'll do fine here. Um, so I have my notebook. What I was going to do here was just run them all, run the whole thing, and you'll kind of see how this goes. And as it's running, I'm just going to scroll down and show you what's going on. So if I say run all paragraphs, it'll say, are you sure? I'll say, yeah, let's do it. And then now it'll kind of skip through each paragraph in sort of a linear fashion. As soon as it kind of wakes up there, it goes, okay, so it starts. It pauses for a second on the paragraph. It's going bing, 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 bing down through the notebook here. And what I'm going to do is show you some of these things and let it just keep on, you know, you'll kind of see it go down here and run, run and updates and updates. Later on, it'll do this uh, stratified sampling uh, that I have set up here. It'll build the models. This guy down, down. It'll build the models. They're just build an attribute importance model. Now it's building a naive phase and a generalized linear model. Notice it's only taking like three seconds, two seconds or something to do all these different things. So it's kind of cool when you do it all inside the database the data scientists can be very productive. And when they want to deploy this model, uh, they can leave the results. I'm doing a lot of evaluations. I'm doing a comparative lift chart here. And then I can, the model deployment, I can just leave the model inside the database here and come back and look at this table of all my predictions, where are the predictions over here? And, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. Now I have a very smart database that knows who's going to buy something, who's going to default on a loan. And I can come back and look at all this from OAC or Oracle Application Express or put a button in front of this. So, you know, it's really pretty straightforward and we'll show you how we did all this uh, by going back up to the top. So I select star from customer insurance lifetime value. I put a little sample in here. Now that just means that when you look at this uh, in Zeppelin, I'm going to see it's going to it's going to default by showing me a thousand records. That's what Zeppelin does. That could have 10 billion records on the database. If I want to see a representative sample of the 10 billion, I could put a sample 10 percent and I will see up to a thousand sampled records. And that's what I've done here. And I can see the data. There's all the data. And uh, I can also, if I wanted to, come over here and I have little kind of graphing widget things. So if I want to make a bar chart out of this, uh, I'd go over here to settings and I'd say, I want to set up a bar chart, or where's settings here? I want to set up a, a bar chart and set up, you know, what goes over here, what goes over here. I'm going to do that later on. So I'm not going to do that right now. So we'll just do a, a, a table here at first. We'll turn off the settings. There's my table and I can sort the table up and down. You have different sort of widgets here for these kind of things. Um, a lot of standard features, nothing really fancy, but just the basics. Um, 
now in this particular business problem, we're trying to figure out who does buy insurance and who doesn't. And if I would pr prefer to show that maybe as a pie chart, where did it go to? I could change it to a pie chart and I can drag this little window up and down and make them bigger or smaller. I can also change this guy over here to say, instead of the width of 12, I could change to a width of um, three. And maybe I wanna put a bunch of different charts together all in some sort of layout. So that's how you do that kind of stuff here. I'm gonna go back over here and put this guy back to where I had him as a 12. And I'm gonna put this guy back to, what was I doing on a bar chart? I think it was with him. So now this is our business problem. We're gonna try and find people who um, buy insurance, I think it's the use case here. They, buy, they go on a cruise and they buy travel insurance, whatever. Now we have certain graphing kind of capabilities. So here I have done a little quick little graph of um, customer ID, but I do a count of customer ID, notice count. And I wanna say, I wanna plot buy insurance as my grouping variable and I'm trying to plot age. So you're not gonna have the most extensive exotic set of graphs here. I can't do a box plot, I can't do, you know, all sorts of different crazy graphs that I might want to do because Zeppelin doesn't support all those things, you know, today. I think that's going to probably uh, be enhanced over time, but we're leveraging open source uh, functionality to, to allow us to do more, more quickly uh, and, and adhere to standards along the way. So I have different graphs and if I could find the patterns just by looking at all the graphs, I, I wouldn't need any machine learning, right? So I come down to here and I say, okay, now I'm going to do this data preparation. Now I did have this version here and in the regular classification notebook, it does just a 60-40 split, 60-40. And there's a little bit of code right here. You can just change this to buy my you know, retail shoes company or whatever. And I can just take a 60% sample of that and a little bit of cleverness here to take the other 40% as a holdout sample. Or in this case, I'm doing something called a stratified sampling, which means it's an unbalanced input data set. So I'm gonna do stratified sampling here. And if this is a little bit too intimidating for you or to present to your, your manager, I can just hide that. And, and, and I have the code there. I can make sure it works or not. In, um, in, in, the, in the model building, there's actually something called create model two, which if you look at the documentation, it has a little bit more um, powerful features that are sort of embedded in there. One of which you can do is just say, I wanna do um, sampling enabled and the default is uh, stratified sampling. So you can actually do that embedded. I didn't do that here, uh, but I think we have other examples of that. So here I've stratified sampling just to kind of set up the data. And so I just did this uh, uh, holdout sample for the test. And uh, now I'm gonna do the model building. First thing I'm gonna do here is a model building for the attribute importance. So as you'll see in all the other slides and stuff, I, I think I kind of skipped over the instructional stuff here is just, here's the create model too. I, I just have, they're all the same syntax, I guess is what I'm trying to say. If you come down here to say building a uh, generalized linear model or a naive Bayes, it's begin, you know, what's the name of the model type, create model two, buy insurance. Um, it's about, you know, I give it a name, I give it the mining function here, it's my attribute importance here. The mining function is classification here, it's classification. So it's a little bit of syntax that you get used to. Now, as I said, we're coming in with the Python, uh, OML for Python, which means you could type Python syntax to do the same thing, okay? To use that same attribute importance function, to use the same naive Bayes, or down here I have a, a random forest or a support vector machine. So you can speak Python very, very soon. There will be a GUI coming on, you know, I guess early 2021, I guess is probably the safest way to say that. Uh, and it'll just be click, click, click. It'll be very straightforward. But here I'm doing an attribute importance. So I said DBMS data mining create model two, attribute importance. I'm gonna use a table review I'm gonna use my unique identifier and that's the target field. When I run this, I'll just run it again right here, I guess. Um, I just ran it before it took, what, four seconds. Whoa, what happened there? I must've jumped out of that or... Sometimes you may find that because um, you were dawdling around or the, the notebooks will time out on you to come back in. I don't know exactly if I clicked on the wrong thing there or, or what happened there. See if there's any more questions while I'm waiting for this guy to open up. Uh, it's the same thing there. Okay, good. Any other chat window questions? All good. Okay, good, good, good. Um, while this thing's waiting to reboot up here, I don't know why that's kind of still taking its time. Uh, I'm hoping I didn't encounter the problem I alluded to before, which could have happened. Um, let's go back to PowerPoint because it's always the safest thing to do. So I showed this demo here. I showed the uh, interpreters and that was just I guess I was given a more elaborate demo of the demo. That was a real brief demo there. So let's review the example notebooks. 
Let's see if that other thing's loading up yet, just yet here. Not loading up yet. All right, guys, I'm going to show you something that you may want to know if you're, let's see, it says it's loading. Let's come back to that. Let's just come back to that. Hopefully you're not running into that same problem there. I, I'm suspicious something's going on there, but I'm going to give it just a little bit more time. Um, it just kind of kicked out on me. So there may be something on the, I don't know. So here's the first notebook I went through. This just shows you the basics. There is another notebook for the attribute importance. I think I just showed you that in a different example there, but this attribute importance notebook, if I were to scroll down, does just that one little trick an attribute importance and it shows you the key variables, the end. So it's, it's just for the straightforward. That's why I wanted to show the little bit more interesting one. Here's predicting, tar predicting uh, target customers using classification. We predict customers who are likely to be positive responders to an affinity card loyalty program. The affinity card responders are of a target value one or defined as those customers who when given a loyalty or affinity card hyper respond. I give you a 10% discount, you spend 11% or more because you're so excited about this loyalty program that you're in. Maybe you buy things for your friends and family. You come to the store more often, it becomes your spot. We want to identify more customers like that. And if you walk through that notebook, it does what I was just showing you in that other uh, notebook. Here's anomaly detection. In this case, we're looking for the rare, unusual cases. I, have, I get my notebook back. Um, I'll show you how to do that live. But what, I, what I'm trying to show you now are there's nine example, simple, simple templates that you can just look at them, read them, see what's going on here. Uh, for market vast analysis, see how we set up the problem and you scroll down the whole thing and then export it, import it to your own space, change the settings to your table of data and your target field and off you go. And I can't count how many uh, people I've, I've, I've you know, said that's how you get going and that's what they do and it works. Um, clustering, we're doing the same sort of thing just for clustering. And then we have some uh, regression trying to fit a numerical value uh, like, like Zillow fix, uh, predicts the value of your home. And then there's also a bunch of statistical functions. So each of these sort of show uh, their own sort of specific tricks. Um, oh, and forecasting. We also have forecasting that was added in, I think, 18C. We added in uh, exponential smoothing um, with all sorts of layers of seasonality and whole winters and all that. It's pretty sophisticated. So um, if you want to do a lot of forecasting inside the database and do all your uh, transactional data as aggregations and do all that inside the database and then just partition by uh, product or partition by customer or, or whatever. You can just build the model, but use all the database functionality for something like partition by. There's another question over here. Someone's got a question. Do we have access? Yeah, you have access to the lab. You should be using it, uh, right? Just go follow what I showed you be before. It's uh, it's in, oh, okay. Um, the lab, it depends on what you call the lab. Um, if you go into, okay, in the, um, I'm going to try to not focus on this thing that's driving me crazy right now. I'm going to try and go over to here and show you. Um, I think it's easiest to Google sometimes. So I'm going to go to uh, Oracle Machine Learning um, blog. And if you go to the blog, then, well, there's a hands-on lab right now. I don't know which hands-on lab there's that, it, that was. There's a few of them. But you can go to this hands-on lab. You know, you can go to essentially the hands-on lab I'm showing you right now, which is a super set of things. It's got a lot in it, probably too much. Um, but if you go into here, you'll see, um, well, actually, this, this you could call this a hands-on lab. This is a um, workshop I did with some other people. We put all these things out on YouTube so you can watch them, you can read them, you can, you know, you can see what we're, we're we use this to pick up, pick up some good wines with, uh, with text. But we've got the whole thing recorded as a YouTube. You can download the demo assets on the analytics data user community. So in this um, hands-on lab, I've said, if you want to get that buy insurance uh, lab, you can go over here to the to the GitHub. And this is the analytics and data. I think I hopefully clicked on that to open up another window right over here. This is the analytics and data Oracle user community, uh, which we have a GitHub over here somewhere. Where's the GitHub? Um, where's the GitHub off here? Maybe we have to add that in here. Um, what I do is I just go to GitHub. I forgot to add that. It's a little, I thought we had that somewhere. So maybe it's late at night here, guys. So I might be missing some things. Uh, if you go to the analytics and data Oracle user community, then the some of the 
notebooks I was talking about are here and the customer insurance lifetime value one that I was talking about is right uh, in, in this uh, setting. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is put this GitHub into the chat window for you guys as well. So that's a good spot to get stuff from. But the other place I was starting to go down to was in this window here. And okay, this window here, go to the top of this, go back. And so I'm going to Oracle Machine Learning blog. I see a bunch of different things here, including this blog about the, the changing role, you know, how to evolve to a DBA, if you will. Here's, here's a hands-on lab on doing the wine. That's the simpler version of that without the text mining. Here's one on how to use the uh, Oracle Data Miner GUI. And I guess I have to scroll down here and ask for one more. Here's the hands-on lab we did at the last face-to-face -face gathering that I've been to in February. Uh, this is the hands-on lab that is 95%, 98% what I'm showing you right now. So I'm gonna put this in the chat window. This is what you should have received um, if I and all of us did all of what we were supposed to do. And apologies if we didn't get all that to you or I didn't get something out to you, but that link walks you down into here and it says how to get started. Here's the hands-on lab environment, the always free infrastructure. Here's the, here's the PowerPoint that I'm walking through right now or something that's awfully close to it. And then, as I said in the beginning, there's a longer hands-on lab that's called this, what I call it, the credits, the, uh, what do we call this one? The, the credit scoring 100, the credit scoring 100 uh, data set. And that's this guy right here, which I'll show you how to get there in a minute. That's this guy right here. I'll put that in another window for you as well. And this is what's in the PowerPoints. This is where it takes you to. And I'll put that over here for you as well. So I'm suggesting that because this one is so well documented, it would be kind of boring if I just sat and you know, step through this thing here because you, it's so well documented. So you can go through this here and you can see how you can log into the Oracle Cloud, provision the autonomous database, create a machine learning model. You can even migrate it over to the autonomous database. And what we've been going through is some of this, this is just a marketing kind of thing here. You go through this and you expand all the steps. And this is what I've been going through um, a little bit more interactively today. You could just read this on your own and that's what I'm kind of suggesting that you do for homework because you can ask questions now. Um, this goes into a little bit more of an evolved one. This is this targeting customers who are likely to buy, uh, no, what is this one? This is, this is, uh, this is um, targeting customers with good credit who also complete their um, payment systems. So, you know, you take out a, like a flat screen TV and you finish all your payments. Um, so anyway, that is yet another part of this hands-on lab kit, I guess is what I'm probably better describe it as. Okay. Any other questions here? Okay. I'm going to continue on. So there's all these example notebooks and I say here, let's review the buy insurance notebook in greater detail. That's, I think what I just was walking through. I probably did that a little bit out of order, but, um, and that's where I say where you can get this stuff from the analytics and data user uh, community so you would download this. I'm gonna go see while you're doing this or thinking about this, I'm gonna see what's going on with my notebook over here because I think I might have to do some cleverness, see if the guy ever finished loading insufficient privileges. That's not what I'm, well, that's the one where I knew I was doing the wrong thing there before anyway. So let's get out of that one. Let's go over to here. We don't need that guy. This guy over here was the old one I had. This is another one I had. Close that guy down, close this guy down. What's that window there? Okay, so I'm gonna come back in from the front, from the start here again, and see if I can just simply log in here. And so this is what you should have all hopefully set up in advance. And if not, hopefully you're following along and doing this right now. So you log in as an Oracle machine learning user. I'm gonna go into the notebooks. I've already had this other notebook over there. I always, for some reason, go in this way and go to the top open this guy up. And if this guy takes a long period of time to open up, um, I'm going to suspect something. I'm going to come back and... Okay, so there... Okay, so now I'm confused because I thought that had kicked out for some reason. This guy looks like he's on his way to opening it up just fine here. Um, does anybody else have any problems with notebooks opening? No comments from everyone, anyone here. All good, it was that's, that's from before. 
I send a bunch of links here. All good opening, that's good. I just imported and loaded it, okay, that's good too. Why am I having a problem? I have a different instance than you, so there, there, there could be something there. This guy should have already, oh, that's a new thing right there, reconnect. So let me see what that guy was doing there. Now he says connected. Yeah, thanks for the feedback. It really helps me let me know if you guys are doing okay or not. Um, like I said, I found a bug uh, that we were going through things last week. Uh, da, da, if that's relevant, I'm on ATV. Yeah, you're on, you know, it should all, all be exactly the same thing. Um, we're on different instances. I'm on the one in Ashburn here in Sydney. So what? here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull the wires out of this thing. I'm going to sign out. I'm going to show you the trick that I've had to do just lately, um, which is I'm going to log in as admin. This is something that uh, I'm working with Denny and the uh, Denny is the development manager for this. Um, and I encountered some sort of weird situation um, that they were trying to track down. And when I've had the situation, I think I've just tripped across again, what I would do is go into here. They said, just stop this, stop the global connections, which basically just sort of, you know, stops all the running notebooks. And so sort of wakes them all back up again. And I'm just going to be forced to do this um, right now. This is something you should never have to do. And um, I should never have to do, but it seems like it's a temporary thing that at least I know I can probably get through this now. Um, so now once I've done that, I'm going to sign out. I'm going to come back in here with my uh, Oracle Machine Learning Database credentials as Mere Mortal Charlie. There we go. And so hopefully that's the right password that's in there. Log in. Everything looks like it's kind of okay. I'm going to go to the notebook that I had just opened up and see if we can finish out what I started to show you before. And hopefully this guy's going to open up and, and off we go. So I'm going to go through some of this notebook, show you what's going on. You've seen all the example notebooks. I'm going through the more involved but user-friendly and kind of fun one this this buy insurance one and then i'm going to point you down the pay yeah, okay now it's opening up i think it's probably because i reset the connection group there and then i'm going to point you, we'll go down the the other one the credit scoring one a little bit but the idea is we're going to probably run out of time and i can just ask you to kind of keep reading that because it's fairly well documented they're all documented actually the notebooks are very um they're very good for learning because you can put down all your instructions everything you're doing it's it's really kind of handy that way so I ran this thing earlier tonight, uh, October 25th, 10.45, it's 11.05. So this is what I was running before. What else did I not show? I showed the stratified sampling. I showed the attribute importance, now we add that. And I guess this is the guy I was just trying to run that guy again, see if he runs again. He's running. Okay, so this guy just did an attribute importance and hopefully this just finishes out here in a second, two or three, so eight seconds, that's a long time. Um, well, for, for me, because it's usually one, two or three seconds or so, I guess it's just sort of wake up. So zero seconds. And then when I come down here, what, I, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to say, well, not right here. I'm going to do this guy here where I say, uh, I'm not here, I'm doing the wrong thing. Click on that. I'm going to say run all below. Now, I can also remove this paragraph. I can move the paragraph suffer down. I can clone a paragraph. And I'm just going to say run all below and say sure. So now what it's going to do is pick up where I left. You know, you can see where I am. I just ran this minutes ago but um four seconds to build the one model a few seconds to build the next model on and on and on it's going to build all the models inside the database and notice the only thing i'm doing here that's different is algorithm is naive phase algorithm is random forest algorithm is generalized linear models algorithm is support vector machines so that's all i'm doing it's building the models everything else is the same settings so after a while it may seem a little bit intimidating if you're not used to you know writing code but you can literally just come in here and say well there's my the name of my model give it whatever name i want there's my uh, a uh, table that I'm using, this this table right here. I don't have to have to select, I can just give the table name too, but I'm doing a view here. Um, and on and on and on. Now I've built the models. Uh, I want to evaluate them. So this is a little bit of code that you can use to change. It's all the exact same code except the different models. Now this is a little kind of cleverness thing right over here where we join all these tables together and then we graph them. And you can see what we're doing over here. And this is the naive guess. So everything that's, a, that's, a, that's higher than the naive guess in this cumulative gains chart is showing the incremental gain you get from having built a good predictive model. So you can go on for forever trying to, you know, uh, look at lift, look at cumulative gain. You can look at uh, ROC curves. All that stuff is is what we cover. It's in the APIs. It's in, you know, we have it in spades inside the product. 
I'm not going into all that right now because generally I would just pick this green one up here, this uh, random forest or the, or the yellow yellow one there, a support vector machine look like they do a pretty good job. And I know I could you know, go forever thinking about all those things, but that's, that's good enough for right now. I think it's very, very good actually. Now I go for model deployment. Now I'm just gonna say, okay, drop any previous existing models. Oh, this is not the wine predictions. That's the, uh, that's a different one there. So I'm gonna drop uh, existing table. So you get too much copy and paste there. You, you run the risk of doing stuff like that. Um, and uh, create uh, the customer insurance predictions table. There's uh, buy insurance. I'm just gonna create a table off this. I'm gonna graph uh, the table uh, uh, who are predicted, who are also over the age of 21. So I can put any kind of a, a more complicated query here. And at the end, I'm just gonna show that I can say, just show the table. But the reason I do this is that table's now in the database. I might wanna come back in with something like, uh, uh, I think I have it over here, Oracle Application Express, and I can come in and uh, point to that table and make a graph for a table with Oracle Application Express. So if I remember my password over here, I think I have a slightly different use case. I'm going to come into here and show uh, four different applications over here, and I'll show you and get one of these guys to wake up over here. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming some of you guys know how to use um, Oracle Application Express. I guess I'm going to show... I guess I'll show this one here because that's what I started to talk about. Um, and I run the application. And so the reason I'm doing this is just because it, it shows how you can go directly from um, you can go directly from building a model inside the database into deploying it as some sort of application. Um, and so here's my application for which employees are likely to voluntarily leave or not. And I have, uh, why did this, I thought I changed that the other day. Um, hmm, I just fixed that the other day for some reason. But I have um, the predictions, the prediction probability. I have uh, uh, the information, the attribute importance chart that I was showing before is over here. And my favorite one is which employees are likely to leave or stay. I, I take the probability of attrition with some other uh, variable over here, like years at company. And uh, I can mouse over this. I can I can zoom in just the people who have been around for a while and see just those people. So all the data, uh, it's all HIPAA compliant. It's all encrypted. It's all managed in the database. And all the algorithms to do all the math are also inside the database. So all the applications are all inside the database. It's just a very nice sort of, we think, converged database, next generation way of doing things. Now I want to go back to the slides. So this customer insurance one I was just showing you right here is... You know, you can look at the examples. The examples are very good and good starter kind of things. This is just like the next level beyond the examples. And the way you can get that is going to this analytics and data Oracle user community. Uh, you just Google that or go to the link I just sent you. And then you'll find it in there and just download it. So here's the input data sets, the two of them, the build a model, the t apply the model. And then here's the notebook that I built. Um, I guess I uploaded that. Well, I did that a while ago, actually. Um, but then what you need to do is download that, make sure you um, do a save as, uh, click on the raw button, then you can do a save as, uh, otherwise it'll come in as a not the right data type. And then you just you, you just import that over here, uh, find that notebook and import it. I'm showing you this in case you wanna import that customer insurance lifetime value data, the way that I do that. Uh, and there's You can use object store, different kind of things, but I use the uh, um, SQL developers uh, ability to import data. Um, just with a little wizard thing here. So I point to the data, I bring it on in, and now the data is inside there and I can go off and run it. Um, and this is the, these are the screenshots in case my notebook were, were not working. See, I'm always sort of packed for bear here in case anything goes wrong. Um, they were evaluating the different models. Look at the lift charts. And I'm gonna pause now and see if there's any more questions. Well, actually, here's the, here's the application express part I was just showing you. And hopefully that graph I was going to show you is now working. I think I had to delete something else was pointing to the same thing. I said, I think I set up some sort of conflict there. So, oh, this is a different one. This is actually the one I should have shown you. This is for the customers who buy likely to buy insurance. So I have my predictions, the probability, and so on. You'd probably go back and show that, but it's pretty straightforward. Actually, let me see if I can get that to work. Back over to here and go back to, uh, uh, what would I do here? Go back. Go back. Go back back one more here, go back one, where is it? Right here, I guess. So if I have that, where's my applications? You can tell I'm not a very good uh, application express user. I kind of, okay, suspicious claims. 
Oh, I don't know where I put that one. Maybe I deleted it already. Okay. Um, here's another one I'll try and open up while I'm just talking here. So if I open up this guy, I think this is a cool one too. This is for uh, predicting. Um, okay, so this is the wrong one. I was. And by the way, what I'm trying to do is foster sort of a community here. So if you do some cool things here um, using Oracle Application Express and Oracle Machine Learning and Oracle Analytics Cloud and on and on and on, then um, if you're willing to share it, we'll put it in the GitHub, the, the Oracle Analytics Data Oracle User Community GitHub. So over here, if I want to say, well, just show me all the people that were age 31 to 35, uh, the age of the vehicle was seven years, the deductible was $700 or whatever like that. And I could say the probability of, of it being a problem, right? And I can see the reasons why the algorithm suggested something. I can see the probabilities. Really nice way, I think, of just sort of deploying these models. And this could be a mobile app. I could run it on my Droid because Oracle Application Express allows me to do that. And so I could do the, the fraud detection. I could do the, um, by the way, I'm going to be doing a, a, a YouTube. Uh, I guess we're going to push out as a YouTube later on this week, I think, on, on automobile fraud claims. Um, this one, basically, we're going to push that out real soon. So keep an eye out for that. Um, so anyway, leave your predictions in the database. Off you go. Now, here's where I'm going to kind of send you on your way, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do. If you want to do it live now, you probably could just run it live right now. It's, it's, it's not so hard. So this says, get started with the hands-on lab. So this is where you would Google uh, or go to this thing up here, oracle.go.oracle.com, hands-on labs. If you don't go to the right place, send me a link, you know, send me something that's it's also in the um, setup uh, links that I think I sent out before. You come in here, there's lab, uh, each one, this is really well done in my opinion. There's little videos you can watch, you can see what they're gonna do. I did this with this other guy, Derek Cameron, who's just absolutely excellent. And um, and if you if you tab 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 over here, you'll get to see the ones that say 300 machine learning. And there's this the, the storyline here is there's this woman Heather, and Heather is a business analyst at this uh, like a Home Depot kind of place. And uh, they are having a business problem where they're they're selling all these flat screen TVs and refrigerators and big stoves and big kind of appliances and stuff. And they're saying in order to buy them on a payment plan, you have to have a good credit score. So they have a FICO score above uh, 675 or something, who knows what. But they're still having problems. People are returning the units. Maybe it's due to the pandemic, maybe, uh, who knows what it is. Uh, but they realize that they're targeting their, their business rules for who gets to walk away with these payment plans is not sufficiently good and they're losing money. So Heather decides she's going to do a predictive model to say, not only do you have good credit and we give you the, the unit and set up a payment plan with, with you, but you finished out all your pay, all your payments. You now completely own the, the unit. And we want to find people just like you that have good credit, buy products from Home Depot or wherever and, and complete the payments and off you go. So what we do here is we you can, you can access this uh, hands-on lab it, and it walks you through Heather and her whole story here, what she's doing um, and uh, walks through the um, I'm trying to get this out of the way so you'd see this whole thing. They call it Alpha Office, the persona of Heather, the data scientist, and basically it tells you what I just said. Um, and then you go to the machine learning lab, and then in here, it'll tell you there's a set of data out there that you can upload. So this takes you maybe just a little bit longer to upload. I think it's actually very, very quick. We used to upload this up through SQL Developer. It took me like a half an hour to upload it on my laptop up to the cloud. And then Derek put it out here in the um, object store. And now it's supposed to be five seconds or something. I've never uploaded it since, you know, I already had it in my system, but uh, I'm told it's very, very quick. So that's why I don't do it right now. Cause in case it was not quick, I didn't want to have the whole lab sort of pause, but you should be able to load this up. You can maybe do it right now while I'm talking. Um, and then you get to this targeting customers that complete all their payments. And you we say we have over a hundred variables and we're looking for people who have good credit versus people that we don't say bad credit, we say other credit. So people that have good credit and people that don't have good credit. We have the chapterization of this whole thing. People who have, you know, we want to look at the business understanding. We're following this crisp DM methodology, data understanding, data, uh, business understanding, data understanding, and so on. And we're just kind of using it as a template and we're walking through the data understanding here. And it's just like the other ones. So these things look a little bit repetitive to me after a while. I'm looking for the people that do not that have good credit, they're usually the rarer case. Now, if you're a newbie, uh, I could I could tell you that I could build a model that was about 80% accurate here just by you know sort of closing my eyes and and bing off I go. And you might say, how do you do that? 
well, I just predicted it's always going to be the other one here. I, I predicted it's going to be the most popular answer all the time. That's my Charlie Berger rule. My neural net, Charlie Berger neural net is really stupid. It just says, pick the most common outcome and you'll be accurate 100% of the time for these 80% of the guys. Unfortunately, you'll be 100% wrong for the ones you really care about. So that's not a good model. So we want to go in here and continue this whole process. If you look at the, uh, the Chris DM methodology, it says data understanding. So we want to understand our data. What type of customers do we have? Maybe some simple graphs. Now, believe me, if you could solve it with the graphs, you wouldn't need machine learning. So, you know, this is sort of almost gratuitous graphics, but we do, you know, try to understand the data, look at some, look at some um, relationships, see if we can figure out that the data makes sense. It's the main thing you're doing there. Now we're doing an attribute importance. This is just like what we did before. So create model two, we're doing an attribute importance. That's the target field from, this is the uh, table or view that we're using. And then we graph and visualize this. Now, I usually do this as a, uh, as a vertical bar chart and you can, you can set the fonts of the, of the labels to be sideways, 45 degrees, get a little bit more uh, fit in there a little bit. We do the 60, 40 train test split. And then we start building the models. We do it just like the other one. We build a number of different models. They all seem very, very similar. We apply the model to make predictions. There's our prediction probability over here. So it looks just like the other one. This one's a little bit more um, involved, I guess, or interested maybe just because it's a little bit more data. The one I just had was, um, I think, 15,000 records and about 20 variables. This is, I think, 100,000 records and um, 125 variables, something like that. Um, it's a little bit bigger. You can see how long it takes. Let's see how long it takes to build. Uh... Well, that's really fast. Um, it's building the models in uh, zero seconds. So I haven't run this guy for a while. I don't know why that was way much faster. Um, but it is, um... I did it back in April. I don't know, maybe the maybe more database and I don't know what, but I mean, it, it, we this data set really does run really quickly. It, it's only, you know, zero to, I guess, 10 seconds or so to build all the models. So we didn't want to do something that had 10, 100 million records or so. You can do that certainly, but we didn't want to wait, you know, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. We just wanted seconds. So 100,000 records, about 100 columns, and it runs in a few seconds. At the end of this one, we're leaving all the predictions and the probabilities inside the autonomous database. So you can come back and access them via Apex, Oracle Analytics Cloud, any kind of application, whatever you want to do going to watch the clock here. Got 10 more minutes, make sure we get any kind of questions. Uh, I don't see any questions here. Okay. By the way, send me any notes afterwards. Let me know if this was working for you. We're always looking for feedback. Is this going too fast, too slow? Um, you know, would you just be happier just reading the, the, the credit scoring notebook that's online? Sometimes I wrestle with, is it really useful to have a human here showing you everything or you could just read it, you know, because you could just read that stuff too. So send me any feedback, any thoughts, really do appreciate uh, that. Also, if anybody gets really successful with this and you have a, um, a success story to share or tell, as you know, I'm the co-founder of the Analytics and Data Oracle user community, and we're always looking for speakers for that. So if you go to some of those places I showed you before, um, uh, the guy just said uh, uh, your, your email, uh, I'll, I guess I'll make a note of that somewhere. Um, but uh, send me something, I'm gonna lose it in Zoom probably. Um, but if we can get you um, um, on the stage, what we're trying to do is put the, you know, sort of the best and brightest out there. You don't have to be like the rocket scientist type of guy, just somebody that solved the problem. So that's kind of cool and interesting. And you're willing to share your successes with somebody else. So we really encourage people to come out and do that. But here, I'm gonna show you something I think is one of the coolest things Oracle has done lately. And this is in collaboration with the um, Analytics Cloud team. And so now if I have all that data that I just showed you, and it's, it, I, this is another one of those notebooks that's out there on the analytics and data user community. Um, so this is in predicting employees that will likely leave. So we want to know in advance who's likely to leave. You can look at the graphs and the tables. It kind of looks the same after a while, but we keep on adding incremental tricks. So I encourage you to kind of download those and see some, some cool little tricks that we put in there. There's little drop down boxes you can do. You can do real time scoring on the fly and, pick, you know, what's their age, their income or whatever, and bang, get a prediction right in the middle of the notebook. That's kind of fun. But here, we're going to go over here to Oracle Analytics Cloud, and I'm going to register an ML model. And when I register a model, it's going to say, well, which model do you want to use? And I can maybe show this live, but I think I'm just going to close out with PowerPoint. Um, I'm going to find some models that I built. Um, I get to see all the information. It was a random forest. It tells me the, uh, the settings of the model. 
And now I can take and set that up in a flow. Um, the Analytics Cloud guys have this concept of data flows. And let me see if I can call up the, um, see if I can call this guy up over here just so you can kind of see this is real. So I'm gonna open up another tab over here. I'm gonna go to Oracle Analytics Cloud right here, Oracle Analytics Cloud. And so maybe I can show you my favorite one over here. Um, and we have all these things out there. There's there's that wine blog that I just showed you before is my favorite one just because we just did it and I worked with some really smart, clever people to put this together. It's my favorite one as of late. Although we got some better ones, I think, coming along. Uh, but we come into Oracle Analytics Cloud and well, here's the punchline. Here are all of the attributes associated with good, good wines over here and bad wines over there. What are these things? I'm actually looking at this DM dollar VL. So this is the support vector machine. These are the attributes of the unstructured data um, that are most associated with good and bad wines. So I think that's you know really cool in the way you can work with this whole product. I can also look at the, um, the wines by country. I can put probabilities in here. So anything I would do ordinarily with Oracle Analytics Cloud, I can do, but I can also have all these predictions in here. And I think I have filters on, and I can turn them off or whatever, clear all the filters, uh, pick points by variety. I've got another kind of graph here. So I just think it's so cool that you can come in here with Oracle Analytics Cloud um, or Application Express or any kind. Let's see if I can get this guy's attention over here. Why is this guy? He's still loading up the data, I think, somewhere in here. Cancel. So I'm just saying cancel. Um, pick a variety over here. Um, but all these um, uh, predictions and all the, um, I think this is my spending limits one. I think uh, down here, I finally say, okay, I got to pick a wine. So how much money, what country, what variety. And I have all these probabilities. I can just kind of go through here and say, what's the probability of this wine for this price? And I'm using the text. I'm using the different uh, filters of Oracle Analytics Cloud, but I'm basically pointing at the insights that I did back over here in, in, um, in Oracle Machine Learning. So I have, uh, in this case, I'm back to the employee attrition one. Excuse me, I apply the model, I leave the results in the database, and now I can come in here and look at the at-risk employees. I can filter, I can drill down, I can see the probabilities, I can see the reasons why. Those are called prediction details. And, and Oracle Analytics Cloud keeps on adding more and more, or uptaking more and more of our functionality to do more of these, these kind of things in an automated way and seamless way. And it's just really been a pleasure working with those guys. Uh, I think it's definitely a win-win for, for both uh, parts of the Oracle products here to get together. So sort of turning the round in the corner here, wrapping up, I think, I know it may be a little cheesy, but I think this is the most powerful weapon for tackling data-driven problems that's out there. You have a lot of people keep their data inside of an Oracle database. And with that, you have the in-database security, scalability, accessibility, everything, different languages, 24-7, um, cloud, on-prem, whatever. And in that, you also have all these machine learning algorithms. You have the analytics cloud, you have Apex, you have the whole Oracle ecosystem to put together whatever kind of you know, data-driven predictive uh, deployment operation you want. We also have this uh, OCI data science and acquisition from a couple of years ago that sort of puts a Jupyter uh, notebook in front of open source Python. If you want to get some um, some NVIDIA boxes, it's sort of you host up, they, they provision open source stuff for you. So you can you can kind of work with that. We embrace open source ourselves in the autonomous and on-premise database, but in the way that I showed you, you can speak the other languages and drive our algorithms from those languages, or you can make call outs. Here they 100% focus just on all open source kind of stuff, which you, know, you can use the two things together, of course. Um, these are all the links that I think you should have gotten in advance. If not, they're in the PowerPoint. Um, hopefully you have access to this. I thought I'd sent this out in advance. If not, I'll get it off to Francisco uh, tonight or tomorrow. It's getting a little late here, but I'll put it up on Google or something and send it back if you guys do not already have that. Uh, but it points to the YouTubes. It points to the hands-on labs that I showed you before. As I did say, we are working on a certification program with uh, Oracle. Well, we're doing it ourselves. I guess we're asking you a bunch of questions. And at the end, we kind of, you know, you are an Oracle, you know, machine learning certified kind of guy. Um, and, you know, maybe we hand out these 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 uh, diplomas of some sort. I don't know. That's kind of a fun, uh, it should say of no numerical value or whatever at the bottom. It's, it's kind of a conceptual thing. But, but this is real, though, because, like I said, if you go back and you watch, if you read this change in role the DBA from Oracle Database, professional Oracle data scientist in six weeks uh, blog series that's out here on the Oracle Machine Learning blog, if you uh, watch the YouTubes, if you do the hands-on labs, if you think about the problem in the in a structured way, and I did a webinar with your group um, three or four days ago, I think it was 
Thursday, Friday night or whatever it was. Um, that's all recorded. You can go back and see that, but it, it kind of says, well, like anything you're trying to look you're trying to learn how to, you know, do a new sport, like say tennis. Well, you don't just get out there and do a serving and forehand and backhand and volleys and everything all at once. I'm trying to learn how to play the guitar. Right? You don't just go up there and start playing like, you know, some pro you, you learn how to hold it. You learn how to do a one chord. You learn how to pick the strings. You, you learn things sort of sync, you know, piece by piece. And what I'm suggesting is if you take that crisp DM methodology and you walk through the examples that I have in the other PowerPoints and some of the hands-on labs articles and stuff I've written and, and or buy a book or whatever, it says work on the business understanding first, the problem statement, get a very clear problem statement. Think about that for maybe a week. Work about, you know, think about the data understanding. What's your data look like? Well, how do I think about the data? What am I going to use to get the right data? Uh, do that for a week. Focus on the data preparation, deriving new engineered features, like what's the ratio of this to that? You know, how many times did I have a dropped call? Think about the, not the data you have, think about the data you want. What well, would be the data you'd want to use to predict these, you know, to solve these problems and on and on and on. And if you follow that whole methodology and use the resource that we have, um, you too will become an Oracle data scientist. Uh, I always like to call, uh, this just happened last week, but we, uh, uh, like I said, I'm the co-founder of this other group, the Analytics and Data Oracle User Community. If you just go to andouc.org, A-N-D, Analytics and Data, O-U-C, just the initials here, I should probably put that on the slide. Then you can get to the YouTubes of everything we've done. You can see us on LinkedIn. We're a group just like what you have. And I was talking to Francisco, we'd like to have more cross-fertilization if we can, more links back and forth, whatever we can do together, because we're all out there doing the same thing. And with that, Thank you very much for your time and attention on this, I guess, Monday morning for you and Sunday night for me. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions. I think we're going to time out anyway, but I'm going to look at the chat. Let me get the email. Let me do this. Okay, my email. Yep. I cannot see any new questions, uh, Charlie, on the Q&A or the chat. Okay. Um, if anybody has any questions at all, they're missing any presentations or links or anything, send it to charlie.berger at oracle.com. With that, I'll thank you guys. Say good night or good morning to Francisco. Very nice. Thank you for having me, everyone. Well, someone just thank you so much, Charlie. And I just remind everyone that the replay of this uh, session will be available in a few hours. You can come uh, as many times as you want for the next couple of weeks to rewatch the video and do the uh, um, the workshop once again in case you have any you got stuck in any part. And also you can interact in the replay page uh, making questions to Charlie and he will be notified. He can reply on his early convenience. Thank you so much, everyone. And have a wonderful night. Charlie, all good? All good. Thank you very much for having me. Good night. Okay, have a good day, guys. Bye.